Let us pray. O God, who showed the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, give all for who the faith for the faith they profess are counted Christians, the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ, and strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns it in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus, chapter 2. Verses 1 to 15a. In those days, a man from the house of Levi went and took to, to wife a daughter of Levi. The woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw that he was a godly child, she hid him three months. And when she could hide him no longer, she took for him a basket made of bulrushes and dabbed it with the bitumen and pitch. And she put the child in it and placed it among the reeds at the river's brink. And his sister stood at a distance to know what would be done to him. Now, the daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river, and her maidens walked beside the river. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her maid to fetch it. When she opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the baby was crying. She took pity on him and said, this is one of the Hebrews. This is one of the Hebrews children. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and call you a nurse from the Hebrew women? to nurse the child for you. And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. So the girl went and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child away and nurse him for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed him. And the child grew, and she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. And she named him Moses, for she said, because I drew him out of the water. One day, when Moses had grown up, he went out to his people and looked on their bodies, and he saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew, one of his people. He looked this way and that, and seeing no one, he killed the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. When he went out the next day, behold, two Hebrews were struggling together, and he said to the man that did the wrong, Why do you strike your fellow? He answered, Who made you a prince and a judge over us? Do you mean to kill me as you killed the Egyptian? Then Moses was afraid and thought, Surely, the thing is known. When Pharaoh heard of it, he sought to kill Moses. But Moses fled from Pharaoh and stayed in the land of Midian. The word of the Lord. You who are poor, seek God, and your hearts will revive.
I have sunk into the mud of the deep, where there is no foothold. I have entered the waters of the deep, where the flood overwhelms me. But I pray to you, O Lord, for a time of your favor. In your great mercy, answer me, O God, with your salvation that never fails. As for me in my poverty and pain, let your salvation, O God, raise me up. Then I will praise God's name with a song. I will glorify him with thanksgiving. The poor, when they see it, will be glad, and God's seeking hearts will revive. For the Lord listens to the needy and does not spawn his own in their chains. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 11, verses 20 to 24. It shall be more tolerable on the day of judgment for Tyre and Sidon than for you. At that time, Jesus began to unbraid the cities where most of his mighty works had been done because they did not repent. Woe to you, Chorazim. Woe to you, Bethsaida. For if the mighty works done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I tell you, it shall be more tolerable on the day of judgment for that and Sidon than for you. And you, Capernaum, will you be exalted to heaven? You shall be brought down to Hades. For if the mighty works done in you had been done in Sidon, it would have repented, it remained until this day. 
But I tell you that it shall be more tolerable on the day of judgment for the land of Sidon and for you than for you. The gospel of the Lord. May the word of the gospel bring us to life everlasting. Glory to Jesus. Brothers and sisters in Christ, one strong quality that Matthew gives about Jesus is that of his humanness, that Jesus is very humane. In today's gospel, Jesus is disappointed with these towns of Galilee where he had spent so much time preaching and performing many miracles. He has shown them his love and compassion by the many healings he had worked, yet they failed to accept him. Certainly, the works showing his divine power and authority should have moved them to faith, but they did not. True, they came to him in large crowds. The gospel continuously tells us that they remained unmoved by his preaching and his proclamation of the kingdom. They came merely to see what they could get out of him by way of his miraculous powers, his cure of the sick, and the expulsion of demons from the territory, because that would save them a lot of inconveniences. Now the Gospels seem to indicate that Jesus found very few true followers in Galilee, in spite of all the favors he has shown to that province. So even though these towns of Galilee were favored with special graces, temporal and spiritual, they failed to respond. Jesus now predicts that it will not be well with them because of their lack of faith. Brothers and sisters of Christ, who among us would dare to say that he or she has been similarly favored, perhaps not with physical signs and wonders, but with many gifts and graces as well as a gift of nature. We all have a body with a measure of health. We all have senses. We all have minds to think, energies to work. We have the gift of faith. We have God's word. We have the freedom to worship and pray, the privilege to hear God's voices in our hearts, both in prayers and in our meditations. We are blessed each day and each moment of our lives to be in this country of plenty and freedom, despite the ungodly happenings in this country, our country, Nigeria. What then is our response to all these blessings we have? Do we give God the credit? Is the Lord everything in our lives? Do we use our gifts in faith to share them with others? Are we concerned that many do not enjoy the gifts we have? Does it really disturb our Christian life? It should shock us, dear friends in Christ, and therefore challenge us to share the many gifts we have with everyone in whatever way possible. It is only Jesus Christ who can accompany us and assist us and make it possible for us to achieve all this. We pray that the good Lord will bless his words in our hearts and help us share the gifts we have adequately with others around us. 
through Christ our Lord. May God continue to bless his word in our hearts through the same Christ our Lord. Pray, dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. Amen. Let us pray. Look upon the offerings of the church, O Lord, as she makes her prayers to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly really right and just a duty and a salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in goodness you created man, and when he was justly condemned, in mercy you redeemed him through Christ our Lord. Through him, the angels praise their majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices we pray join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. As you see, come to me, Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gifts we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Acclamation by two, the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that by taking out the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Ignatius, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, we bless St. Joseph, her most just spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased throughout the ages, we may merit to be called as eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ.
through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, let us say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, with prayer from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live our reign forever and ever. Peace and love of the Lord be with you always. Let us with a slight bow offer to each other the Son of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm a word that is internal on my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be good. May the body and blood of Christ which now receive wipe out our sins and clean bring us life everlasting.
Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O oh Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its seven effects upon us may grow through Christ our Lord. On behalf of the parish community of Holy Cross Mechanic Village Apo, we wish to appreciate the Archbishop, His Grace Most Reverend Ignatius Ayao Kaigama, and the, the press team of our television, the Catholic television of Abuja. Thank you for giving us the, giving us the opportunity to pray the, together with you at this Mass. We pray that the good Lord, who has called you to share in this part of evangelization, will continue to strengthen you, both now and forever. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you now and forever. Go in the peace of Christ, this Mass is ended. My name is Reverend Father Neute Clement Uja. I'm the chief servant of Holy Cross Parish, Apo Mechanic Village, otherwise called Apo Mechanic New Site. I was sent here on the 1st of June 2019. And for two, two years, I have been working with the people, very good and God fearing people full of love, full of joy. When you worship here, you experience that God actually truly lives here. Working here has been very, very spiritually fulfilling. And we thank God who has used almost everybody here as a point of blessing to every other person. We, our major challenge here is space. We have just have a very small land upon which the church is built. If we, where by the special grace of God, we have another land outside the estate, which hopefully shall be the permanent site of the parish. But with the new system which the Archbishop has introduced, the creation of uh, pastoral areas, very soon that land will be created, given a pastoral area. That means we will now turn this place into the estate chapel. That is our hope and our desire. And we know that God, we believe that God will help us to actualize this. We want to appreciate the Archbishop, His Grace Most Reverend Ignatius Ayao Kagama, who has given us the opportunity to pray together and with the Archdiocese on this day, Tuesday of uh, second 15th week in ordinary time. We thank the, the media crew of the Archdiocese, also the Catholic televisions, who also came to cover our masses, our mass. We pray that the good Lord will continue to bless all of you abundantly through Christ our Lord. You are watching 
CTV.